Hi, I am Ms. Warnow, and we are going to begin the unit on the mole. I would like for you to have out your periodic table, a piece of paper, as well as a calculator so that you can follow along as we work problems for this unit. So what is the mole? We sometimes use words to represent a specific number of items. We talk about a pair, we know that means two. We talk about a dozen, and you know it means 12. And then gross, you may not know this, but it's a dozen dozen, so 144. In chemistry, we use the term mole to represent a really huge number. And that number is one, point, uh, one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. And it's a really big number, and it's really big because what we're um, using it for is to count atoms and molecules. And these are very small, so it's going to take a lot of um, them to get a good uh, count on. So how did scientists um, come up with this number, 6.02 times 10 to 23rd? It started with the atomic masses for the elements. For example, carbon has an average atomic mass of 12.01 AMU, that stands for atomic mass unit, meaning that one atom of carbon has a mass of 12.01 AMU. The scientists wanted to be able to use the com uh, convenient atomic masses for the elements, but on a larger scale. So they decided to keep the numbers all the same, just change the unit. And so we used 12.01 grams of carbon. It's the same number, just a different unit. So we're going to use grams instead of AMU. We know that one atom of carbon is equal to 12.01 AMU of carbon, but how many atoms are of um, carbon are in 12.01 grams? This is the number that's been experimentally determined to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. This is also known as Avogadro's number. It's named after Amadeo Avogadro, who is best known for his experiments with gases. Move this out of the way. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles would be Avogadro's number, which is equivalent to one mole. What this means is that the unit on every um, atomic mass on the periodic table can be changed from A and U to grams. And that mass in grams will give you Avogadro's number of that element. This is known as the molar mass because it is the mass of one mole of that element. Particles, what do we mean when we say 6.02 times 10 to 23rd particles? Well, particles could be atoms, it could be molecules, it could be formula units, it could be ions. So when we talk about an atom, this is used to describe individual particles of an element, such as helium, copper, and sulfur. A molecule is used to describe the particles of a molecular compound. It can only contain in a nonmetal medloid or it could be a diatomic element. Okay, so examples of molecules would be um, carbon uh, dioxide, phosphorus trichloride, water, those are molecular compounds. But these elements here never are by themselves. So they always pair up with one another. So these are called diatomic and they're hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. You are expected to know those. And so if you start with nitrogen on the periodic table and form the number seven, it would have one, two, three, four, five, six of them. And you've got to remember to come over here and get hydrogen. And then there's a little memory thing. I bring clay for our new hut. You could also do um, hunkel root. These are just little um, memories. Uh, things that help you know the seven diatomic elements as you can use of the element symbols. That can also be formula units used to describe the lowest ratio of two ions in an ionic compound. So you have sodium chloride, um, potassium nitrate, and silver phosphate. And then you can also um, talk about in terms of ions. This is barium phosphate. Okay. And we'll talk a little bit more about ions um, in a bit. And anywhere, in any reaction that we are performing, there are huge numbers of particles reacted, so we need a way to count these, and that's where the mole comes in. We'll use 6.02 times 10 23rd, or you can see it on your um, other resources as 6.022 times 10 23rd. It wouldn't matter which one of these you use because they're only off by um, two thousandths, so either one of those are acceptable. Um, and so since the, um, the substances are so small, it's helpful to group them and numbers that are more manageable, and that's where the unit mole comes in.
So let's work some problems. So like I said, you should have your periodic table, you should have a sheet of paper, and you should have a calculator. And guess what? We get to go back and use our dimensional analysis skills that we, that we learned at the beginning of the school year. So this is how many moles of copper are in 1.7 times 10 to the 24th atoms of copper. So we need to write down our given 1.7 times 10 to the 24th atoms of copper. And since we're going to want to cancel out atoms, it's going to go on bottom. And we want to get to moles. We do know a relationship between moles and atoms, and it's that one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And these will cross out, and we're left with moles of copper, which is what we would like. And so when you punch this into your calculator, and I recommend that you actually pause and punch this into the calculator and make sure that you are getting 2.8 moles of copper. Okay? And notice this has two significant digits. That has three. I have two in my final answer. How many atoms of gold are in 2.5 moles of gold? So we start by writing down our given, which is 2.5 moles of gold. And since we want to get rid of moles and end up in atoms, since that unit's on top, we're going to need to put it on bottom. And we do know relationship between moles and atoms. And it's that one mole of gold is going to be equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Notice that not only am I writing the unit, but I'm also writing the substance. So be sure to show all of this work when you're um, doing practice problems in class. So when you punch that into a calculator, you get 1.5 times 10 to the 24th atoms. Notice I put the unit of gold and I also put what the substance is. So you, um, this had two significant digits. I have two here. I listed the unit and I included the substance. I also included these units and substances in my work as well. How many moles of water are in 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water? So we start by writing down our given 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. We want to get rid of molecules, so we'll put it on bottom so it will cross out. And we do know relationship between moles and molecules. It's that one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. So that crosses out. And so when you punch this into your calculator, you do 3.01 EE23 times 1 divided by 6.02 EE23, and you should get 0 0.498 moles of H2O. Once again, this has three significant digits, three. I put my unit and I wrote my substance and I included all of those along the way as well. You're expected to show good work here. I pause the video and go ahead and take a moment and work this one. It says how many formula units of sodium chloride are in 0.25 moles of sodium chloride? So when you look, we wrote down the given here. Notice the unit and the substance. We want moles to cross out, so it goes on bottom. And one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units, and this should be your answer. And then we need to make sure. And ACL. There you go. All right. One mole is also equal to the mole of mass in grams. So um, how does the mole relate to mass? So just think about this. A dozen, does a dozen eggs have the same mass as a dozen cars? So does 12 eggs have the same mass as 12 cars? We know it does not. We know the cars have more mass. Does a pair of shoes have the same mass as a pair of earrings? We know that they do not. So a mole of helium is not going to have the same mass as a mole of carbon. Okay. And we're talking about uh, mole, we're talking about 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. We can look 
on the periodic table and look at the masses of helium and carbon and see that they are different. We call the mass of one mole of a substance its molar mass. So where do we find the molar mass of an element? You find that on the periodic table. This is why you needed your periodic table with you while you're watching this video. All right, so what you'll do, it says phosphorus here, find phosphorus on your periodic table. And we're gonna talk about one mole of phosphorus. We know that one mole of phosphorus, phosphorus, excuse me, is equal to 6.2 times 10 23rd particles. But what is that molar mass? So you look on your periodic table, actually look at it right now. And when you look at it, you'll see it's 30.97 grams per mole because it's 30.97 grams of phosphorus for one mole of phosphorus. Find aluminum on your periodic table. Actually find aluminum right now on the periodic table. One mole of it we know is 6.02 times 10 to 23rd, but is that going to be, um, is its molar mass more or less uh, than phosphorus? Well, find it, and when you look at it, it's 26.98 grams per mole. Find silver, remember silver is AG. One mole is 6.02 times 10 to 23rd, its molar mass is 107.87. This is the unit for molar mass and you are expected to use it. Now we can convert between grams and moles of a substance by using the molar mass. Remember the main goal here is that we need to know how many particles um, we have in a given amount of substance. It's important when we do this later in chemical reactions. All right? So let's work a few of these. It says how many grams of silicon are in five moles of silicon? So 5.0 moles of silicon for every one mole of silicon has a mass and you will need to go physically look this up on um, your periodic table and it's 28.09 grams of silicon and so when we multiply 5 times 28.09 we get 140 grams of silicon okay how many moles of potassium are in 136.9 grams of potassium? If we want to get rid of grams, so it goes on bottom. We're trying to get to moles, so moles would be on top. This relationship is that one mole is equal to the molar mass, and so we go look on the periodic table, go physically look at your periodic table for potassium, and you'll find it's 39.10. Let's cross out. And so we multiply 136.9 times 1 divided by 39.10 we get 3.501 moles. Okay. That's four significant digits because we had um, four right here. Okay. So putting it all together, so if you know that one mole equals 6.02 times 10 23rd, you know one mole equals a mole mass, you should be able to go between these by always getting to the mole. Okay, so how many atoms of argon are in 87.6 grams of argon? So you start 87.6 grams. You want to get rid of that, so it brings down here. You know relationship between mass and moles, so we'll go there. And that relationship is that one mole is equal to the molar mass. So where do we find the molar mass of argon from the periodic table? And now we're in moles, but we want to be in atoms, so we just draw brackets again. We want to get rid of moles, so it goes on bottom. And now we can get to atoms. And the relationship between moles and atoms is that one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And so those cross out. And so we multiply everything across the top and divide it by everything across the bottom. You should get 1.31 times 10 to the 24th atoms of argon. What is the mass of 5.6 times 10 to the 24 atoms of aluminum? You should pause the video and work this. Okay, and so you'll see here, broke down the given, and we wanted to cross it out. We can go from atoms to moles. That's this idea here. And then we can go from moles to mass because we know that one mole is equal to the molar mass. Okay, that concludes video one. Be sure you took in-depth and high-quality notes. Have good example problems in your notes, and we'll see you in class tomorrow.